what is up and what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel today is a very special episode we are going to talk about the super bowl the biggest game of the year the climax of the season um obviously there are like there are with every super bowl a lot of storylines to get into this today um and we're going to touch on all that i'm going to give you guys my full thoughts this is going to be my full kind of super bowl dump i'm going to give all of my thoughts and all of my predictions and everything like that this is going to happen in this video so you know grab your popcorn grab your water bottle sit in your chair get comfy because this video is going to be a little bit longer but i hope that you guys enjoy and i do think i'll provide some pretty good opinions about the big game now just some housekeeping before we get into that don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, comment down below if you agree with me or not. I'm very interested to hear what you guys have to say. But let's go ahead and get into it. So, starting off, just you know, a little bit of uh, gambling stuff because I am a, a crippling addict. Um, the 49ers are two point favorites in this game via DraftKings. That's my bookie that I use, um, and that's pretty much the consensus around the league. I would say is that the Niners are point and a half, two point favorites, um, which to me is kind of odd. Um, I understand the 49ers are the one seed, but look at the way that Mahomes has played. The Chiefs have played much better than the 49ers in the playoffs. The Chiefs have two wins against better teams than any team the 49ers have been in the playoffs this year. So I get it, but I also don't. Um, I think that they're trying to take advantage of, I guess, the, the 49ers hype train. Uh, but truthfully, I would I would think that this is probably not a correct line. The over-under set at 47.5. About what I would expect. I would have guessed about 50, and that's exactly where it seems to lie. Um, but getting into that over under, I think that's a beautiful transition to my first topic of discussion, which is, I think, the biggest matchup in this Super Bowl, Super Bowl 48. That's going to be the 49ers offense going against the Kansas City defense. So let's first of all, let's, let's take it from a level of coaching. Let's go a micro view of this. A macro, excuse me. Kyle Shanahan versus Steve Spagnola. Right. Let's talk about Steve Spagnuolo because I think he's one of the most underrated defensive coordinators, maybe in league history. Um, outside of Bel and I would say this: this is your first hot take in this video. Outside of Bill Belichick, Steve Spagnola might be the best defensive coordinator ever in the Super Bowl. Because if you think about it, right, he's got three Super Bowls. This would be his fourth. He defeated the undefeated New England Patriots all of those years ago. In the Super Bowl, you know, with the Giants team. And people forget, like, they, they love the David Tyree catch. They love Eli Manning. They held the Patriots to fucking, what was it, 14 points? It was unreal. It was an unreal defensive performance. Chiefs a couple years ago, obviously. I'm sorry, Chiefs last year. Chiefs a couple years ago. This guy's been a dog. In big games, he has been a dog. And I think he goes underappreciated in the minds of a lot of NFL fans. But the Chiefs do not have their current dynasty without a guy like Steve Spagnuolo. They, they, they don't. They They've relied on and gotten a lot of really, really big defensive plays, as all good teams do. I'm not saying Mahomes is a defensive merchant, right? Um, but they've relied on a lot of big plays, and the Chiefs' defense has come through. Like, they really have. So, kudos to them. But, obviously, Kyle Shanahan, who – Kyle Shanahan's guy I, – I don't want to say he's a choke artist because that feels a little extreme, but he's definitely a guy who struggled in some big games. You know, people always point to the Super Bowl against the Patriots where he gave up the 20-3 to lead – Right, they they want to point to the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. You know what was it four years ago? Um, gave up a ten point lead. Uh, they want to point to NFC Championship games where they held the lead. Like Kyle Shanahan seems to, I think, get a little tight in these big moments. And you know he's never won a Super Bowl. And part of the reason is because again, I don't want to say that he chokes, but it's like maybe he 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 clenches up a little bit. He he grits his teeth a little bit too much, and that is something that you don't want. So obviously. That is going to be something to watch in this game as well. Here's here I'm going to simplify it for you guys. Here should be the offensive philosophy of the 49ers. Run the fucking ball. You have the best running back in the NFL, Christian McCaffrey. Not only that, but your zone running scheme is damn good. You know, it was taught to him by his dad, Mike Shanahan. He's been running it. It's a really fucking good scheme. And the Chiefs defense is not great against the run. I believe they were like, what, 28th in the league this year against the run? They are not a good run defense, right? Their linebackers are okay. Their defensive line is not great outside of Chris Jones. Where they're really strong, in my opinion, is their secondary, especially their corners. Their corners are awesome. So if you're in a position as the 49ers where you get down, boy, oh, boy, you better have fun throwing against those corners because you're going to need to. 
and you know you add to that the, the pass rushing specialty of, of Chris Jones, it is going to be a pretty bad scenario for the 49ers if they're down in this game and they have to throw the ball, and they, can, they have to be predictable with throwing the ball. To avoid that, just run the ball with Chris McCaffrey. Not only does that play to your strength and their weakness, but it also keeps Patrick Mahomes off the field. So just please run the fucking ball. For anybody looking at like prop bets or anything, I don't really do prop bets, but you know, Chris McCaffrey, expect him to have a very big day. Um, I also think that another key point in this game in terms of the 49ers offense is can Purdy continue to navigate through pressure? And I, I don't mean this in any kind of disrespectful context. And this is kind of going back to my Kyle Shanahan point as well. But the Lions and Packers did not have great defenses. They, just, they didn't. You know, Packers defense was getting better maybe, but they just fired their defense coordinator, Joe Barry, right? Aaron Glenn, no disrespect. I don't consider one of the you know, upper echelon defense coordinators in the NFL. Lions defense as a whole is definitely not good. Um, the Chiefs defense, they they are they're nice. I mean, they're they're really good. They have a great coach, they have great talent, great, you know, elite talent. Um will Purdy be able to escape pressure and run for a first down or, you know, keep the play alive and find George Kittle down the field. Those are things he's done in the playoffs, which I'll give him credit for. Will he be able to do that and continue to do that against the Kansas City Chiefs? It's yet to be seen. Um, again, I also think it's worth mentioning that the 49ers, you know, they played a really close game, and their offense really wasn't good for half the time against Joe Barry and Aaron Glenn. That's that's cause for concern a little bit. And, you know, you look at Brock Purdy, I would argue that five, maybe six of his quarters of playoff football this year have been either bad or below average, right? That's 75% of his playoffs have been bad or below average. Now, in the money situations, in the fourth quarter, he's been good. He's made plays. I totally get that. But you cannot expect to beat Patrick fucking Mahomes when you're playing 75% of a bad game. That's like the argument... And this is an extreme example, so don't take this out of context. But it's like the argument when Tebow Mania was a thing. And everyone was like, yeah, he's not good quarters one, two, and three. But in the fourth quarter, he rallies the troops, and they get it done. And at Tebow time... The second the Broncos played a legit team, they got fucking waxed, right? Because you remember, they beat the Steelers in that first playoff game. And it was like, wow, wow. They played the Patriots next week, and I think it was 45 to 10. It was drubbing. Right, that that could happen here, in in a scenario where, not saying it will, in a scenario where if the 49ers play three bad quarters and then try to pull it all together in the fourth, the Chiefs will have already run the, won the game. Like there's no there's no you know Brock Purdy save us moment in the fourth quarter if if that happens. It is you have to keep pace with the Chiefs the entire time, and then you know you kind of at the in the fourth quarter once it's close, that's when you pull ahead a little bit. But there is there is no. You know, I'm going to play bad for a half, two quarters, three quarters, whatever, and be good. Absolutely not. Not against the Chiefs. Um, speaking of the Chiefs, let's talk about their offense. And the thing about the Chiefs is that they have a guy named Patrick Mahomes. Maybe you've ever heard of him. He's pretty good at football. Um, and I just have such a confidence and such an ability to, to, say with, to say with, you know, my chest high in the air that Patrick Mahomes will just find a way to get it done. He always does. And, you know, early in his career, it was by lighting up the scoreboard, scoring 35, 40 points a game. He was bombing it to Tyree Kill, all that. And we've seen the last couple of years him take a much more mature approach to quarterback. He's not really just chucking it. He's playing underneath. He's, you know, finding weak spots in the zone coverage. He's, you know, finding Travis Kelsey in, in really tight windows, right? Um, I just think the maturation of Patrick Mahomes – Playing the quarterback position has been a marvel for a guy with such amazing arm talent, athleticism. Um, he's got you know good. He's got amazingly you know fast and twitchy muscles, especially with his arm is a rocket, as you guys know. For him to tone it down and say, okay, I'm going to play less aggressive. I'm going to play smarter football. I, I just think that it's it's just completely fantastic, right? And I'm not trying to just necessarily, you know, ride Mahomes for no reason. But, like, I mean, that's a real thing. Like, Josh Allen still struggles with that. Josh Allen can't turn off Superman mode. Mahomes can turn it on and off at will, right? Oh, you guys need me to score 40 points? Bet. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to go chuck it, whatever. Oh, you guys, we're going to win this game 17-14? to 14? Cool. Let me take 40 minutes of possession time and just suffocate the opponent, right? And 
that's something that Tom Brady was always really good at, um, managing the game. Now, when we say game manager at quarterback, it's oftentimes a derogatory term. You know, we, we say game managers, and we're basically being nice and calling a guy ass, or that he's just a very limited thrower, maybe he's a terrible athlete, right? Um, calling somebody a game manager rarely is a compliment, but I think in the sense of Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes, that is actually such an, an amazing skill of theirs, is their ability to manage the game, right? Don't turn the ball over. Uh, get first downs. You know, we're, we're not necessarily looking for the 50, 60 yard bombs. Get first downs. Don't turn the ball over. Keep the clock moving. And I think just play a style of football that becomes so hard to beat, right? It becomes so hard to beat. Each possession becomes more and more and more important. And when you have that guy at quarterback, you like your chances with that. You really do. Like, if I told you, if I told you the Niners and Chiefs each get let's say, eight possessions. Chiefs might score on six of them. I mean, truthfully, right? They they, they might. So I, I just think Patrick Mahomes is, is becoming what Brady was and which is can win the game in any sing, any possible way. Anything, no matter how the game unfolds, Mahomes can go out there and win the game. And obviously it's still TBD with Brock. I, I don't think that he's Mahomes level even a little bit. But – he has shown an ability to come from behind, especially in these playoffs, so kudos to him. But we'll see. Um, I think the interesting thing about this Super Bowl as well is, you know, when you compare it to the 2019 one, uh, the Chiefs, you know, had that big, bad offense against the big, bad 49ers defense, and the Chiefs defense was kind of ass, and the 49ers offense was kind of ass, not so much. But now it's almost the opposite, right, where it's the Chiefs defense is one of the best-ranked units in the league, the 49ers offense, I believe, was the number one offense in the NFL this year. And the 49ers defense, I think, is significantly worse than it was in 2019. And the Chiefs offense is significantly less explosive than it was in 2019. Now, you still got number 15 playing quarterback. So by no means are you are you ass. Um, but I will say less explosive because I think they had a lot of playmakers on that Chiefs team that aren't present. Obviously, the biggest name being uh, Terry Kill. Um, I think another thing to mention is that Travis Kelsey is not – at the peak of his powers anymore. I think we can all agree with that. By no means do I think he's washed or, you know, is going to retire after this game to go live a you know, fantasy love life with Taylor Swift. I, I just think that, objectively speaking, he was a better athlete in 2019. I think that that's a fair statement, right? Um, but again, you have Patrick Mahomes. Like, I don't know. I, you're always just going to be good with Patrick Mahomes. And I think that um, one of the really big mismatches in this game one of the true, like, this is going to determine the Super Bowl mismatches is Andy Reid's offense versus Steve Wilkes on defense. I think when you look at it, Kyle versus Spagnolo is such a good matchup, and it could go either way, and each guy is going to win a few series, I, I know for a fact. I think Andy Reid might actually just pull the pants down of Steve Wilkes and just embarrass him at Super Bowl 58. Like, this is a guy who Andy Reid has won Super Bowls, right? Uh, been there, done that, been in the league forever. Steve Wilkes, um, a lot of Niners fans are really calling for his job. And understandably so. I, I think the Niners defense has been very underwhelming this year. I think you saw, you know, there was a lot of people talking this week about a lack of effort in the championship game from certain guys on defense. And I truthfully think that if I'm a 49ers fan, that would scare the shit out of me, is when the defense is on the field. And that's a, that's a far cry from what it was a couple of years ago. Even last year, the Niners had a really good defense. And you just say, oh, shit. Like, just please, I, I have to close my eyes. I can't watch. So I think that that's a huge, huge advantage for the Kansas City Chiefs, Andy Reid against uh, Steve Wilkes. Um, and then another thing I want to talk about before I get into some of my other cliff notes, special teams. I think that it's, it's overlooked. I don't see a lot of people talking about it in the Super Bowl you know, media coverage. But I got to say, I think this is another advantage for the Chiefs. Do you have confidence in Jake Moody to go out there and make big kicks? You can't. You, you just can't. He's missed a lot of kicks this year. He's missed a lot of big kicks this year. He missed one against the Packers, right? Um, that could have, you know, decided the game. He's He's been inconsistent all year. I understand. I'm not going to write him off. He's a rookie. I get it. But when you draft a kicker in the third round, uh, you expect the guy to be fucking cash money, and, and he has not been. And then on the other side, you have Harrison Bucker, who is honestly 
I would argue, a top three kicker in the NFL. Tucker's one. We all know that. But I would say Harrison Bucker's probably three. And we know that if push came to shove and the game was decided on a field goal on the Chiefs' end, that they're winning that football game, right? He's proven that time after time, that he can make those huge kicks where the pressure's on, you know, the whole stadium's on their feet, the game's on the line, and he nails them. He's just, he's that guy. He truthfully is that guy. So I think special teams is the big advantage for the Chiefs. Again, if, if the Niners are in a situation, and they very, mil, they very well might be, where it's tied or they're down by three, and they get themselves in the field goal range, you got to be, again, as a 49ers fan, you have to not like your chances of Jake Moody making that kick. Whereas on the other side, I think if the Chiefs are down by three or they're tied or whatever in field goal range, the Chiefs are going, all right, we made the kick before it even happens. And I think that's the, that's the confidence level that you get with Harrison Butker, right? Um, so let's start about some other stuff. And this is some, I think, themes of the playoffs that I'm going to look for in the Super Bowl. First of all, like I mentioned, the 49ers have not started good in either game. Um, the Packers were, I think, a much inferior opponent than, than the 49ers, and that game was really a lot closer than it should have been for a lot clo- for a lot longer than it should have been, right? Um, the, the, the Packers hung around for a really long time. Now, the 49ers, again, to their credit, made some plays down the stretch. They, they were able to separate themselves. But you kind of watch the game, you're like, hey, what's, what's going on? Uh, the seven-seed Packers are coming into San Francisco and almost beat them. It's a little weird. And then against the Lions, like, you blinked, and they were down 17 points. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? And truthfully, this is not me being a fucking hater, I think they won that game because the Lions shot themselves in the foot. They got way too trigger-happy on fourth down. They forgot how to catch the football. Jameer Gibbs, you know, puts his hand the wrong way and fumbles the football. Like, you really had to rely on a lot of Lions' uncaused errors for you to win that game. And I think that that is not something that the Chiefs will do. If at any point the Chiefs go up 17, it's game over. And I obviously, I know statistically it's like probably a 95% chance likely, whatever. But against the Chiefs, it's it's over. Like, pack your stuff, you know. Um, you're not you're not coming back against the Chiefs. A few things I put down as well. Um, 49ers can't afford a slow start. Brock Purdy cannot afford turnovers. You cannot turn the ball over in plus territory. Every opportunity to get points against the Chiefs is paramount. You cannot give those away. You know, we saw it against the Ravens. He threw the pick to Kyle Hamilton. That was one of the, the turning of the tide in that game. Four Niners get in the red zone. He throws a pick to Trent McDuffie or something. Jeez, uh, oh, man, you, you really set your stuff back a whole lot there. Um, because I, do, I really do think that if the Chiefs get a touchdown or more lead, uh, they're not giving it back. They're not giving it back. They're going to run the fucking ball with Isaiah Pacheco down your throat, which, by the way, 49ers defensive line outside of Nick Bosa is not very good. I hate to break it to you. Eric Armstead is not what he used to be. Javon Hargrave is probably just a pass rush specialist. And Chase Young su- legit sucks. So the Chiefs have no problem running the football. I mean, they're a team with Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes, and they ran the ball more than the fucking Ravens did last week with the number one rushing offense in the NFL. They have no problem turning around and handing the ball to Isaiah Pacheco 25, 30 times in this game. I promise you. If they're having success on the ground, they will continue to do it. They will bleed the clock, right? Um, I think the other advantage I think the Chiefs have in this game is that, like I said, I think they can win in any way, right? If the Chiefs start off slow and the Niners get a lead, I do have confidence in Mahomes to bring them down the field and to, and to make it a game. If the Chiefs have the lead, I have confidence that they can manage the game, bleed the clock, run the ball, score, and you know win in a low-scoring affair. The 49ers, I, I think that they have a really good formula for success, and that is put your foot on the gas, keep it going, play with a lead the whole game. They they will be a team that is good to coast, right? If they, again, if they have a seven-point lead, they have a touchdown plus a field goal lead. They 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 will have a lot of success. Kyle's offense is not made to come from behind. Brock Purdy is not a quarterback that you want dropping back 35 times this game, having to throw them back into the game. You can say that he did it against the Lions, and I would agree to a certain extent, but he also had a pass 50 yards in the air, boink off a face mask into, right into the hands of his number one wide receiver. That is not going to happen against the Chiefs, I promise you. I also think that their secondary is much, much better than the Lions. I think they're better coached than the Lions. 
And again, you're putting yourself in a real advantageous situation. Um, you're putting the Chiefs, I'm sorry, in a, in a real advantageous situation where they you're then playing to the, the strength of the Kansas City Chiefs, and you never want to do that. Now, it might seem like I've been dunking on the 49ers um, for this whole video, and, and I don't want it to seem that way. You know, I know you guys see the Seahawks stuff in the background. I'm a Seahawks fan. I make no, <laughs> I make no mystery of that. Um, so I am going to end the video saying some really nice things about the 49ers, and this is going to hurt my soul, and I'm probably going to throw up afterwards, but I'm going to get it out just because, you know, journalistic integrity or whatever. So first of all, I, I will say that ever since Brock Purdy has become the, the, the quarterback of the 49ers, uh, really the only time that they've lost has been on some bullshit, truthfully. You know, last year in the NFC Championship game, Brock got hurt. This past year, they had a couple, you know, really close losses. Like I mentioned, the Browns game with Jake Mooney missing the kick. Um, you know, they they have been really, really, really good when their main guys are healthy. When Trent, Debo, and Brock are healthy, they're fucking unreal. I mean, they're, they really are. And Debo is, you know, a much bigger, I think, importance to this team than a lot of people give him credit for. When he's on the field, they are a different offense. They 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 are awesome, and I don't know if he was playing hurt on uh, last Sunday against the NFC against the Lions in the NFC Championship game, um, but I don't expect him to be at all limited in the Super Bowl. I expect him to be a hundred and ten percent. Kyle's gonna feed him as much as Kyle wants to feed him, and he is just a matchup nightmare. Now you also have George Kittle, who they don't really involve in the passing game as much. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. He's a phenomenal. The 49ers are the def definition of stacked, right? And looking across the game, both teams have a phenomenal coach. I would say the top two coaches in the NFL, ironically enough, right, meaning the Super Bowl. Obviously, the Chiefs have a massive advantage, massive advantage at quarterback. But outside of that, where do the Chiefs have a personal advantage? Receivers is the 49ers. Offensive line is probably the Chiefs, but their all-pro all pro guard is out against the Super Bowl. Tight end. It's close, but it's the Chiefs, right? Defensive line, I would probably give the 49ers just because of Nick Bosa. Linebackers, it's the 49ers. Defensive backs, it's close. I think the 49ers have slightly worse DBs. But again, the 49ers match up really well on paper in every single category except for quarterback. And I think that is like the one thing where I say, can I confidently pick Brock Purdy against... Patrick Mahomes. Now, people have been talking about, you know, oh, well, Nick Foles beat Tom Brady, da, da, da. Okay, that's fair. Tom Brady also threw for, like, 500 yards in that game. So, like, let, let's be honest for a second and say that, like, Nick Foles didn't really beat Tom Brady, right? Patriots defense had a very uncharacteristic off night, but by no means was Tom Brady, like, being outplayed by Nick Foles. He was, he was putting up great numbers in that game. So, I think that this is a good matchup. Again, we got two really good teams. I think as the season went on, you really said to yourself, okay, the Niners are clearly the best team in the NFC, and then there's a gap between everybody else. It was like the Niners, Gap, Cowboys, maybe the Eagles, the Lions were in there, the Packers snuck themselves in there at certain points in the week. But everybody knew that like the cream of the crop in the NFC was the 49ers. And in the AFC, you know, the Ravens looked like that team, and the Bills look like that team. And, you know, you said to yourself, you're like, well, the Chiefs, they're not that good this year. You know, they fell off. They rebuilt. And Mahomes is just truthfully so unwilling to relent and so fantastic at his job that he didn't care about any of that. And he beat those two teams that everybody thought was going to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl in back-to-back -back weeks. So I think this is a great game. Um, I know you guys have been waiting, so I'm going to give you my Super Bowl predictions I think the Chiefs win this game 24-20. to I think there's a lot of running in this game. I think the Chiefs uh, are able to manage the clock very, very well. I expect them to win the time of possession. And, you know, I think in the fourth quarter, they're playing with the lead. Brock Purdy won't be able to, to get the 49ers back into this game um, and win it. I, I just think that when you give Mahomes the ball back, he's not going to give it back to you for a long time. He's going to make throws. Mahomes won't make mistakes. I think Purdy makes a mistake or two, and I think the Chiefs win this game. So I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys listening to my opinions. Again, the Super Bowl is on Sunday. I'm probably posting this on Thursday morning. So let me know. We have a few days before the game, so let me know what you guys think. As always, I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. 
and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace out.